Happy Wednesday, kittens. It's April 9th, 2014, and this is now podcast episode 65. Welcome. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Amanda. You can find me on Ravelry as Wit or as So Knit Cookie on Plurk, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, and on YouTube. If you happen to be watching in iTunes or YouTube, if you could either give a star review or on YouTube give a thumbs up, that would be much appreciated. And please do the same for all the podcasts that you enjoy. The, both of these actions help others to find podcasts in the search engines based on recommendations. So, week in review. There isn't a ton that I did this last week. Um, I did a lot of reskinning. I kind of sat around and powered through one project in particular, so I don't have a lot to show off. And I've mostly been grumbling and complaining about the weather because we keep getting weather forecasts that say that the next five to ten days are going to be beautiful and when those days come up they are considerably colder and wetter and less pleasant than they were originally projected to be it's very chilly today yesterday was just a nasty cold wet freezing day and i keep telling myself it's going to get better and eventually we will get there speaking of next week It is my children's spring break, so I might not be recording. It could be two weeks before I record again. It's going to depend on if my husband actually is able to take the week off, if the weather is nice, and if I have much to show off that it's worth doing a podcast for. So you might not see me, but you never know. So anyway, let's get into the show. There's not a lot of content this week, so this one should be fairly quick. First up is a finished object. So the last, I don't know how many shows, you have been watching me work on my Frisin shawl, which is a pattern by Brittany Wilson, and I have been doing it as a friendly knit along with Kate over at Stitch Addiction. Well, it is fresh off the blocking board, which would be my bed. The ends are not woven in yet, but it is finished, and I'm trying to find the correct side to show you first. Here we go. Here it is, kittens. Whoop. It is done. I didn't use any pins or anything. I just did a soft blocking. I stretched it out on my bed and then stretched out all the points and then straightened it as needed. And I think it worked out pretty well. It ended up using, I think, sorry, my nose is just itchy. (laughs) Um, It used 113 grams of that large cake of yarn I showed you, which is approximately 300 yards based on my my guesstimations. This base is allegedly the old Socks That Rocks base. I'm not sure, but I used the numbers, I think, for the current base, which is very slightly thinner because this doesn't come off to me as being a heavy fingering weight. It seems like a pretty true fingering weight. It reminds me a lot of uh, Sundara or Madeline Tosh even. So my numbers could even be completely off. I would not try to do this with anything less than a full skein of fingering weight yarn. And I managed to get in all 13 points. When I do a bind off on these, I don't like to do a a regular just pass one over bind off. I like to do the one where you knit two and then knit those together through the back loop, knit one, knit the two stitches together through the back loop, which produces a slightly stretchier bind off that helps prevent puckering and pulling so that when you block shawls and other items it makes it easier to get them straight and not have to worry about it uh, sucking in at the end and yeah there's not too much to say about it it is not a bad little scarf as written as you can see it's uh put my camera there It, it has decent tails on it it's a good size yeah, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I will definitely knit this one again. Not soon, I don't think, but I will definitely work on another when I'm done with some of my current works in progress and I'm in the mood to knit <laughs> a metric ton of eyelids again. That may have been the worst part about this shawl is that unlike a Martina Ben pattern, which this one looks very similar to her Brickless, sorry, which is a worsted weight pattern, um, the Frisson shawl is knit slightly differently, and unlike Martina Bem, where her patterns usually have a certain number of row or number of repeats, and the entire shawl is done with those rows, this one 
had this a similar thing where there were only really two or three different types of rows in the pattern, but the numbers changed, and you had to keep an eye on that, and the numbers for creating the points changed all the time, and I ended up getting to the point where after I was about four or five points in, I took a highlighter, and every time I did a certain repeat row, I would tick it off as I went so that I knew how many I had done, and I didn't have to try to keep track. So yeah. Overall, I would say that's it's very nice, and I am happy with it. I wasn't sure if I was going to like the yarn or not because it felt kind of crunchy when I was working with it, but it softened up very nicely with blocking, and it did let off some excess dye, too, when I was rinsing it, which kind of surprised me. But it seems to have been only excess dye and not that it was bleeding color or that the dye was improperly set, so... Yeah, I can't think of anything else to really say about it at the moment. This is a very nice lightweight shawl, and I'm hoping to get a fair amount of wear out of it during the next month or two, which I'm sure are still going to be quite chilly here from time to time. So that leads us into works in progress. So I don't like to have multiple objects of the same type on the needles at the same time if I can help it. So I tend to prefer when I can to have like one type of one socks on the needle one shawl, one sweater, maybe a blanket, you know, just, I don't like to have too many things going at once. I find it quite overwhelming. So now that Kristen is done, I was able to cast on my Trillion shawl, which has had one evening's worth of work on it. Sorry, my needles are just clacking around here again. And this is that Another Crafty Girl Strong Sock that I showed you last week in the uh, Swedish Chef colorway from the Muppets. I can't remember what it's called now because she changed all the names to avoid copyright infringement issues, but this was the one based off the Swedish Chef, which is just beautiful tans and pinks and blues. It's actually a very happy uh, springtime color. It's working out quite well for the time of year it is. And I did one evening's worth of work. So this is what I have so far. Nothing too serious here. But this has a very low number of rows repeat, and it is so fast and easy to do. This is total potato chip knitting. Doesn't have much thought put into it. As I said, you know, this is a shawl that goes from side to side, and it's got these eyelets. And so far, I am really happy with how the colors are distributing. I know at some point I'm going to get some flashing and pooling, probably closer to the middle or three quarters of the way done. Eventually it's going to be inevitable that I'm going to get big pools of color, but for now they're pretty and they're almost stripey and the garter stitch helps break it up quite a bit. So I'm looking forward to getting this done relatively fast. I am participating in two knit-alongs with this shawl. The first is again with Kate of Stitch Addiction. She's doing a little friendly shawl knit-along for the month of April. And then the other one, I did not write it down, so I'm going to see if I can remember this correctly. If you watch the Stash Less podcast, the host from that, and I'm blanking on her name, <laughs> sorry, is hosting a knit-along race-along, I think it is. It's a K-A-R-A-L, K-L-R-A-L, with a friend of hers from another podcast, and she happens to be doing Martina Ben patterns. So I thought that since I'm going to be knitting this shawl anyway, that I would play along in there as well and help her have another number for her to add for her tally when she gets to the end there. And there are, of course, prizes for that one, and I think that one also runs for the month of April. I cannot remember what the other podcast is, but she is doing Patricia Martin patterns, I think, from another designer. So each podcast has a designer that they're doing patterns from, and they're competing to see whose group can complete the most patterns in, or the most finished objects in the course of a month. So it should be fun, and I'm looking forward to that. And I'm thinking that that should get done pretty quickly because, yeah, it's ridiculously easy repeat, and with all Martina Bem patterns, you knit the repeat over and over again until you hit a certain percentage of the yarn left, and then at that point she gives you your cast-off, bind-off, finishing edging instructions, so should be some good stuff. And then the only other thing I worked on this week is my April personal socks that I showed you last week that I had started. 
So this month I am doing two pairs of children's socks and I decided to try tube socks for my kids. And last week I showed you my first one for my son out of the Knit Picks Felici in the Building Blocks colorway. And you can see how little I have left here. I'm almost to the end. I managed to finish one and got to approximately the halfway point. I had a 48 gram skein, so I knit until I was at about 25 grams. And then I worked on um, binding off. I do Jen's surprisingly stretchy bind off. And because I do that, it eats up two to three times the amount of yarn a row normally would. So I tried to make sure that I left myself with enough that I'm not running the risk of having a shorter sock. But then I started the second sock. And yesterday I focused on this finally. I started somewhere down here and I ended up up here by the end of the night. And when you lay them together, I am pretty darn close. I am within a color stripe, I think, of starting the ribbon because they are very slightly offset by approximately four rounds, I think. And I will very, very shortly be going into the ribbing and into the top of the sock. And I think this one, there's actually more yarn hiding in the middle here than I realized. I probably could have knit this one for another quarter of an inch or so, and then maybe even had perfectly matching socks. But it's okay. You know, I'm happy, and there's going to be hardly any of this left, and that is excellent. And once that's done, I will then start the exact same socks for my daughter, but in sugared violets, which is very pretty. It's pinky purples and blue violets and some slightly gray uh, colors, kind of wisteria-ish, I guess. And yeah, it should be a lot of fun. I have already tried the socks on my son, and for him, as written, they are the tiniest bit snug. But I think he'll be able to get a little bit of wear out of them. He has very large feet for his age, and they're very wide. He's going to have his dad's feet. <laughs> the poor thing. Um, so they aren't going to fit him as long as they could, but they fit my daughter beautifully. I've already tried them on her. So hers are going to be made the exact same. And I have another single skein of Felici in a colorway that's for my son that I may try again, but play with the cast-on numbers and the sock numbers. Um, these ones I cast on 12 per needle. I increased up to 28 per needle and then knit the socks. So these are 56 stitch socks on US size ones. So I mean they are practically a small adult size sock and they have a you know, fair amount of stretch in them. But again, son has wide, long, big feet. I'm going to try next time doing a 13 or 14 stitch sock. Sorry about that. I suddenly got a dry spot in my throat and a tickle. Gotta love it. Uh, the allergens are finally starting to kick up. So unfortunately, as a big allergy sufferer, I'm going to be a little um, scratchy and coughy and stuff. Sorry about that. So as I was trying to say <laughs> before my throat tried to take me out, I'm going to try casting on the next one for him with 13 or 14 stitches per needle on the sock. And I think I'm going to increase up to, instead of a 56 stitch sock, 30 per needle for a 60 stitch sock. And I think that will just about make them perfect for him. They should It should make the sock just that much wider, which doesn't seem like much, but when it comes to socks, I think it'll be sufficient. Overall, he likes them, but these are ultimately going to end up being another pair of socks for my daughter. And I noticed with these, and I thought I would mention it, if you remember my spooky socks I did for myself out of the spooky colorway of Felici, how dirty my yarn was, this one is really, really dirty too. You can see the white looks dirty, the yellow looks dirty, and Knit Picks has discontinued Felici. There's been a little bit of debate about whether or not this is true, but someone else had actually contacted customer service in the Knit Picks group and said that the Knit Picks representative said that it wasn't just that the colorways were running out, but that they were discontinuing the line. And um, this is the second colorway I've had this problem with, where it's very, very dirty looking. Like, even from back here, it just looks like the socks are dirty. Which is a little disappointing because the colorways are actually quite pretty, but apparently any colorway with white and maybe yellow, they're just too light and they just, they get dirty. So that is all I have for works in progress. Uh, next, I'm going to talk about spinning the yarn for a minute. Despite how non-productive I appear to have been when knitting, I have been doing a lot of spinning again. 
because I'm in a little bit of a love affair right now with um, the Vespera, despite the peripheral stuff that's going on with it that is making me very unhappy with the seller, which is yeah, still ongoing. <laughs> Eventually, there will be a long version of this story, but for now, just suffice it to say, still having problems. And I have been doing, as I said, a lot of spinning. Last week, I showed you half of a spin I was working on of Spun Right Round Pole Work in the Licorice and Glow Stick colorways, Glow Sticks colorways. And I planned to apply them together. Well, yesterday, I had a plying session, and I finished up this up. It is approximately 4.95 ounces, so I was right when I thought I was going to get between 5 and 6. I ended up having a bit more of the glow sticks than I did of the other one because I, my um, licorice plied, or I did the singles, I spun the singles a little bit thicker on that one. Had I been as consistently thin as I was on the glow sticks, I think I would have been just about perfect and been a little over 5 ounces. But I got that, and there's approximately 295 yards in here. It has had a bath, so it's already all fluffy. And yes, it, it really is this big. It's this huge, puffy, really nice, squishy skein. Very soft. I've been working, trying not to over um, spin my singles and to keep them just a little less ropey and get them through a little faster without them getting really kinky in the process. And... I seem to have done okay. This is definitely softer than some of my other ones. I mean, you can see I can squish it in pretty good. It's got a good amount of squish to it. It's not as airy and fluffy as a um, woolen spun yarn would be, but yeah, overall I'm pretty happy. Based on the yardage and the weight of the skein, this should be sport DK-ish. It's not bad. It's very long. I did, I used my uh, two yard medium value for this one just because I knew there was so much of it. And yeah. Really, really happy with how this came out. For the most part, it's all barber poles. There are a few sections where the blues matched up because the blues were pretty much the same. And I had a lot of sections where the neutrals matched up. But interestingly enough, they weren't as close in color as I originally thought they were. So, yeah, lots of barber pulling. And I'm thinking I might spin these or knit these in socks. It's very fun. Lots of crazy colors. And as you can see, these ones here are actually a very bright blue green but it's showing up more blue because that's what my my um, camera does just lots and lots of color and relatively consistent there are a few spots where I was really impatient and I got a little blocky but that only really happened on my first spin and by the second set of singles I was doing pretty well so I'm very happy and pleased with how this turned out there we go. That one looks a little less crazy, I guess. But yeah, overall, so, so happy. It's so bright and it's so colorful. Love it. The parts where the pink and the green together reminded me of another of Renee's colorways. I think it's called Boomer, where it's bright green and it's pink. And I believe there's a neutral in there, as there usually are. And yeah, big squishy skein. So all the more reason why I need to focus on getting some stuff knit out of stash so that Eventually, I can have one of those cubes dedicated to nothing but hand spun, which is definitely my new love and something that I want to have lots and lots and lots of. So what else have I been spinning? Um, I'm still working on that Spun Right Round VFL in the Love Bug colorway. I've started the third set of singles and not very far yet. I would say maybe two-tenths of an ounce has been spun up. I was focusing on the Vespera this week, but... I have been here or there taking out my trindle, spinning out a few lengths, and then going from there. And yeah, it'll eventually get to the same size as the others and it'll be done. I'm hoping to have it done by the end of April and have it plied and ready to use maybe in May. I'm so ready <laughs> to see what this looks like when it's done because I've been so curious with just how thin these are spinning, like parts of it are cobwebby where it's been a little bit less... Uh, Still somewhat inconsistent, but mostly it's more like this. But every once in a while I have spots where it's a thread or two and it's very cobwebby. I love my trindles. I'm just going to say that right now. Out of all of my spindles I have so far, my trindles are my favorites because I like to spin very thin. And my goal when I learned how to spin was to do soft yarns specifically and preferably a three ply or maybe even a four ply. So I'm definitely getting there with that. 
And then also on my Vespa, I have started Two If By Hand in Periwinkle, which I showed you last week. It's going to be a little bit crinkling. This is the first half of these full logs that I had spun up or prepared. I've been working on these. Um, the Periwinkle is these beautiful, really complex purples. It's showing up much deeper, like the inside of this is that very blue color you're seeing, but the outside is actually a beautiful dusty lilac, which for some reason, Pamela is showing it off much stronger. But I've been working on those, and I'm trying to do spinning similar to what I did in this one. So I'm hoping to get something of equalish weight. I'm only doing that with itself, so it'll be four yards, and I'm hoping to get about four ounces, and I'm hoping to get maybe 250 yards out of it of two ply. So we've done FOs, works in progress, and spinning so far, and I have one little piece of stash enhancement for today. The other day, my Hello Yarn March 2014 Club colorway came in. If you are by chance in the club and you don't want to be spoiled, please look away for a minute. I took it and I braided it like I always do for storage purposes. And this one is Tide Line, and it's a Romney top this month. Romney wool. Very pretty. I'm going to take it out. This one, I think I'm going to try to spin as a sock yarn, and I might do this one a little earlier than my others. Just because I'm not sure what I think of the Romney. I haven't spun Romney before, but it's slightly... Hmm, I don't know how I want to describe it. Crunchy would be wrong. But it's definitely not soft like Merino. It's got a little slightly crisp feeling to it. Again, you will have to, in your mind, pretend that you're seeing like turquoise here. Pamela doesn't like blue greens. That's not an entry in game time to see me. Let's see. Let me make up the colors there. Just oh, it's so pretty. It's very slightly crispy. It's a more woolly wool than I usually use. I spin a lot of Polworth, which Polworth is sometimes referred to as poor man's cashmere. It's extremely soft and it's just, it's puffy and it's fun. But this one is Romney. And it's different shades of blue, blue greens, some brown, and this, this kind of mustardy gold color. Yeah, I don't know if I would... I actually probably could even possibly wear it on my neck. I guess if I did that trick, shove it down my shirt for a while, <laughs> see what happens. I could just determine if it's a by the spin sock. I think for socks it would be okay. I might even give it up and turn it into man socks for my husband because he's less fiber sensitive than I am, but we'll see. I'm really happy with it so far. I have one more month in my current um, quarter of the club and then renewals are right now too so I have to go and renew my club because I want to be in for at least another quarter. I really enjoy the clubs that I'm in so yeah that's really just about it besides the fact that I'm hoping to go to a fiber event this week and um, the season's starting to kick off. Sorry <laughs> getting distracted because she's jangling. This weekend is the Central New York Fiber Frolic in Baldwinsville, New York, which I think is about an hour and a half from here. It looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. It's on Saturday the 12th. It's $4 to park and then admission is free, so can't really beat that too much for an outing with the family. I'm planning to go with mine, drag them all down there with me and walk around and look at sheep, hopefully, and look at all the different vendors. There's going to be a lot of vendors there including Renee, spun right around. There's going to be Holiday Yarns, who I took my dyeing class approximately a year ago from. And then the other one I'm really excited about is Fat Cat Knits. Um, if you haven't looked at Fat Cat Knits site, uh, every time I go there, I end up favoriting and saving and putting onto my Amazon wish list at least six or eight colorways that I would love to take home right now. So I'm looking at the event as an excuse to try and pick out a braid of it and take some home. I'm planning to be pretty good during this. I really want to go look and check it out and see what it's about and do a little bit of shopping, but hopefully not too much shopping. So if you're going to be, if you're in uh, upstate or central New York and you're going to be there and you see me, stop and say hi. 
I'm shy and I might look at you like I'm terrified, but if you give me a minute, I will uh, <laughs> loosen up and be more friendly, I promise. I'm not unfriendly, I'm just extremely shy and uh, social situations make me very anxious. So let's see, other than that, I'm still waiting on my tax paperwork for my own shop. I've been doing little teasers here and there on my Instagram. Sorry, I am now petting a dog that you can't see. <laughs> and yeah, I'm still waiting on the, the paperwork that I need, but today I did get a letter of recognition and a certificate from my senator. So <laughs> I guess that's a move forward. It's an improvement. It means that at least I'm in the system. And I guess if I haven't seen that, I think early next week, I'm going to call around and figure out what's going on with it and if I just maybe misunderstood the timeline. But I suppose you guys might want to know a little bit more about that. So the shop name, which I have been keeping pretty mum until now, is Mammy Toes. And these are my cards. I did this art myself. And on the back, if you can see... Mammy Toes. You may even be able to make out the uh, Etsy shop that, mm, if it wants to focus. Oh, camera off. No? Well, anyway, even if you were to go to it right now, the shop is not, the shop front is not up. It will be Etsy.com backslash shop backslash Mammy Toes shop. S-H-O-P. Because there is another Mammy Toes, apparently, but she is a buyer, not a seller. And she is on Ravelry, too, so I'm sorry that I took your name as my shop name, but um, that's how it goes sometimes. Uh, so, yeah, I'm very excited about that, and I've been working on rescanning. Uh, the most recent one I've done, which is still up here, is one of the more subtle experiments I have done, which reminds me a bit of birch trees. Most colorways are going to be experimental at this point in one-offs, so if you see something you like, I may never have it again. <laughs> just letting you know, I don't want to create a frenzy or anything, but just as a warning, if it has a name with experiment in it, and it will be experiment with a three-digit number, the odds are pretty good that I'm probably not ever going to be able to do it again, or I might not, I don't know. I haven't quite figured that out yet. I'm going to attempt to, but I wasn't really writing down what I was doing because everything I've been doing is very on the fly and kind of experimental. So anyway, this one happens to be experiment 011 or experiment 11. It's very subtle. I've been playing with the idea of more subdued and less bright speckles. This one still has a lot of color in it, but they're very small. You might be able to make them out. You can see little tiny flecks in there. Oh, there we go. That was just too close. I've been wanting to play with the idea of something that would be slightly more neutral, a little less girly, and maybe appeal more to people who either don't like bright neon in your face colors or possibly. You know, I haven't really seen a lot of speckly yarns that could translate as being very masculine. So I thought I would play around a little bit, and I've had a couple successes so far. So I think this one is very nice. It's mostly cr the cream color, but there's little bits of gray in here, very light gray, and then the brown and the speckles. And yeah, I love it. I love all the stuff I've dyed up so far, and honestly, if I could, I would keep all of it, but... That kind of um, negates the purpose of opening the shop. So I have been very slowly working through all of these, getting them reskeined, making sure that they're in good shape, and that they're not all tangly for you guys, because I've been learning lessons on how not to make tangly messes when I'm dying. And yeah, I'm hoping to have a shop announcement sometime soon. I just, I want to do everything right, and I'm waiting on that sales tax information for me for the state of New York, so... Just so you know, I am working on it, and there is a, uh, a shop profile on Etsy. I have, I think, the same name on Ravelry for it. There will be a shop Ravelry account, although I won't be using that one for too much. So if you need to get in contact, you can do it through my personal account for now. And really, I think that is about it. I ended up 
rambling more than I expected to today. I honestly thought this was going to be under 20 minutes. So I'm going to let you all go. I hope you are all having a lovely day. If you happen to be going to the Fiber Frolic, I might see you on Saturday. And for the rest of you, I'm hopefully going to talk to you next week. But if I don't, have a lovely series of days, kittens. Bye.